In this demonstration, we're going to walk through the Ethereum Consortium blockchain template. This is a template that was created by the Microsoft product group in order to make it easier to spin up an entire network of, a, of private Ethereum in your own Azure account. Now in order to do that, I wanted to walk through a couple things. The first thing is when you come up to the portal here, uh, the first thing you want to do is come up here to the top right and up here where it says new uh, is where we're actually going to click on. So we're going to click on new and then we're going to type the word Ethereum and you'll see a bunch of them come up and the one we want is the Ethereum Consortium Blockchain Template. It's right here and if we click on that guy um, there's a big description here about what this does. I'll go ahead and expand that. So you can see a description about what it does. If you actually click on this hyperlink right here, let me zoom in so everybody can see that. Right here there's a kind of a hidden hyperlink. This actually goes out to a TechNet page that kind of has um, Q&A, um, so you can put your questions and things up here about the actual template. You can see some people put some things. You can also download a PDF here, which actually walks through the architecture of what's actually deployed here. It actually describes the template in, in very good detail, and everything I'm going to go through here, you can actually see there too. So if you want to do this offline, uh, you can actually do that yourself. But the first thing we want to do is actually click on this button down here uh, that says Create. So when we pull this up, there's actually going to be a, uh, a couple steps here that we have to go through to actually provision it. First thing is we have to give it a prefix, so we'll just call this demo. This is the uh, VM name, so this is going to be the username that gets provisioned to all the virtual machines that make up our network. We can choose whether to use a password or a public key. I'm going to use a password. But we have to give it a resource group. So we'll just name it RG, and we'll give it a location. Now once we've done that, uh, the next step here you'll see is network size and performance. And this is basically saying how many consortium members. A consortium is, um, uh, you can think of it as businesses that want to work together. So in this case I'm saying I have two businesses that want to communicate, but you can see there's uh, a variety of choices here. You can go the whole way up to 12, which would be a rather large consortium. Um, and then inside the consortium, there's mining nodes and transaction nodes that make up the network uh, that will service the blockchain. And we can basically specify how many nodes we want for mining as well as transaction. And then we can pick our performance level of our storage. So if we want to use SSDs or hard drive, uh, we can also pick the high availability uh, and DR of our storage. So we're picking LRS, meaning we have three copies. We could also pick uh, GRS or read-only uh, GRS, which would basically replicate it automatically to a different zone. And then also we have the virtual machine size we could pick, but let's just take the defaults for this demo. Next we have the Ethereum settings. These are specific to when you're provisioning Ethereum. Uh, the first will be a network ID, and then we'll have an account password. Just enter a strong password there. And then we have to enter a private key phrase, which is going to be used when they generate our private key. So put that in. And that's all we need to do. So in this case, um, you're going to see it runs through some validation here. You can see it's running final validation. And eventually we should see validation passed. Uh, and that's what we see right here. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And this last phrase, uh, we're not actually purchasing anything, so the only thing that's going to be purchased is the virtual machines. So the the cost per hour of running those virtual machines is the only thing that's of pay here. Everything else is um, as free. So once we hit that, you'll see that uh, that pain goes away, and we actually see uh, deployment started now. When you're in the Azure portal, one thing you can do when you see these is you can click on this little bell up here. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that. You click on this little guy, and he'll show you if anything's actually happening right now. So you can see I have a deployment started here. And if you look inside of that, if you actually click on it, you actually can drill into the details and see things are actually starting to get created. So in our case, uh, a few things have already been created. It looks like we're working on our load balancer right now. 
and um, we spun up some network components and, and some compute there as well. So it's going to take a few minutes here and uh, you'll see this thing's actually deploying. It usually takes between uh, three to five minutes uh, to actually deploy these templates. Okay, so now that we have our uh, template deployed, you can see there's a whole lot of resources that actually got provisioned for us. And this is kind of the magic of these templates. So not only are we provisioning some virtual machines, but we're also laying down all the bits that we need on there in order to run this consortium network. Uh, so the Geth client, we're actually doing some configuration with that. We dropped the uh, load balancer in here. Uh, we have VNets and subnets that were all created for us automatically. And if you look at that documentation, it actually shows how these things are all laid out. Now, one of the things that we need to do is actually see this thing running. Now, the easiest way to do that is to look at this public IP here. Um, so it's one of our resources that's inside of here. And if we just grab that public IP address and put it in our browser, we see that we have a kind of a dashboard here and we can actually see some telemetry coming off of that chain. So this is showing we have one transaction node, two mining nodes uh, for high redundancy, and we actually show that these are the con in the consortium. So this is uh, consortium member zero and one, and uh, the block numbers are there. We actually have a way for us to mint ether, and so that's the next piece we kind of want to show is actually using this thing. So if we hit reload here, you'll see that the block numbers are going up. So essentially, this is writing uh, empty blocks uh, because there's no transactions that are actually happening. But if we want to simulate a transaction, one of the things we have to do is uh, create a wallet and actually create an account and do some things with it. Now, in order to do that, we need some Ether, right? Um, so this uh, little tool here at the bottom will actually allow you to, to fund an account with some Ether. Now, this isn't real. This is just used in a private setting. Uh, so the Ether has uh, no real monetary value in the real world, uh, but it works for our private network. Now the easiest way to do that, if you look in the docs, is to actually download this uh, component called MetaMask. Now I've already downloaded it, it's an extension for Chrome. When you click on this guy, walk through the provisioning, you essentially have to agree to the terms of service. You create a new vault, give it a password. You should copy and paste this into uh, a safe place. This would allow you to recover your vault in case you uh, lose your password. Uh, there's just a warning there. And then we have this account stood up. So this account is basically just created locally here. Now one of the things we have to do is hook this up to what we just provisioned in Azure. So in order to do that, uh, we actually need to click on this. Uh, there was a little hamburger menu up here before and then we're going to click on settings. Once we click in there, we actually have to put the endpoint of where we actually want to go now. I'll zoom in on this because it's a little bit tricky when you first set this up. So essentially we've got to put HTTP and then we're going to put the IP address of the network that we stood up there. Remember that public IP we got. And then the port is 8545 for our PC. So hit save and then we have to log back into this guy. Okay. So we're logged in, we have an account here now. I'm going to go ahead and copy the address of this account. Um, again, this is just a local account. And we'll pop back over to our little tool here. Now what I'm doing is dropping the address of that one. So what's going to happen is, you're going to see it, it says I sent some ether over there. Now if we pop back over uh, to our account, you see boom, there right away. Um, let me zoom in on that, it happened pretty quickly. When the mining actually happened, uh, we received our thousand ETH here. Now to, to further show uh, what we could do here, we could actually switch accounts here. And then we could basically create another account. Now this account's zero. So there's zero, let me zoom in on that. There's zero ETH in this account right now, you can see. We're going to go ahead and grab the address of him. Now we could go over to our, our portal over there and, and put a thousand ETH over here. But what's more interesting is we could actually start to transfer money between these two. So in this case we could say send could drop that address in. Let's just say we want to send 10 ETH over there. So once we do that, we then hit um, accept here. 
and after the mining operation happens here in a few seconds you'll see this one actually drops to 989 and if we switch accounts and actually look over there to count two you'll see in fact that it actually has 10 ETH now so this is kind of proven out that uh, our system is actually working. We have a network here. We're able to actually exchange Ether, so transactions are actually flowing through the system. And um, you know, we can see our block numbers are up here. And um, you know, once we have this kind of stood up, now we could actually start to build smart contracts. We'll show that in some of the later uh, demos. But this is a good start for getting your infrastructure ready. Um, this is running private Ethereum on Azure. Uh, you saw the single click deployment. Uh, very easy to get started with this and so I recommend you check it out. Thanks.